last deployment um, was very short notice. Um, we didn't hear anything about it until the last minute, and I had less than a week between the time I was notified of my deployment and the time that uh, I left for the Moog site at Camp Atterbury. I arrived in Afghanistan on July the 18th of 2004. I was there for 13 months um, from the period of July to basically August the 1st of 2005. Um, I served with uh, 1st Battalion, 101st, 151st Infantry out of New Albany. Uh, it's, it's an infantry unit. I was the fire support officer there and also a uh, staff officer working in the uh, in the battalion operations cell. Uh, my job was pretty unique and then I was allowed, I, because of what I was doing, I went pretty much throughout the entire country. I got to see Kandahar in the south, all the places that people see about, read about Afghanistan. I got to go to all those and to some historic sites, Bami and um, to see the, the Buddhist ruins, so it was, it was quite quite interesting as far as the people and the places in the, the Afghanistan. Um, the bad side of that was was the mines, you know, that was the one constant thing that you look where you step because there are 10 million landmines out there and don't step on one. So um, I had several additional duties because of my police experience. Um, for about the first six months, um, I would work my shift in the in the operation cell and then go downtown to uh, to the uh, basically the command headquarters base in Kabul to run the police uh, to help with the police uh, formation project. My experience as a police officer bought me an extra duty over there in Iraq which was taking care of the, well not taking care of, I was to oversee the Iraqis in there facilitation of the detention facility, which was not a fun job. Um, they, you were just from the top level of commanding general in Iraq, I mean, want to know what's the status of the detainees, are they being treated well, are they being cared for, and that was something that consumed a lot of, of my time and attention, and I was, I was in there a lot. And if I wasn't in the, in the detention facility, I was out in the gun truck. We, uh, my job was a little different than Greg's. We were a 15-man uh, MIT team, which means we lived with an Iraqi Army unit. We went out with the Iraqi Army, um, a lot of their missions, um, and then the Iraqi commanding general of the Diyala area, which is where I was in Bakuba. Um, he would have to go to a lot of little meetings of different uh, tribal cheese, different little shakes, and try to facilitate, okay, well, this tribe has done something to make this tribe mad, and constant feuding over there, so he'd have to try and facilitate a little peace negotiation with them, so, of course, we were always going with them to all these little, little meetings with the tribal chiefs and the shakes and these little villages and trying to uh, basically keep the peace over there. There were a couple times in, in, uh had in mind that um, things happen as things do over in Iraq. You hit an IED and, uh, and they're like, well, what could have done? How could we have known that this was going to happen? Well, same thing as over here. Um, the good people are going to stay away. When they know, I mean, they may know something's going to happen. They're going to stay away. The only ones that are going to be out roaming around, um, are the bad guys. Those are the ones that are going to be out because, because they're plotting, they're planning, and they're trying to to stir up trouble, trying to, uh, like I said, lay IEDs, and, and those are going to be the ones that, that are out. I mean, good people are going to stay away.